Back in the early days when I was a child, when I say early days, I mean my early days, um, there were private parks and so forth. They weren't super prevalent, but they existed and people made it so that they were there for people, other people to use and made sure that there, the upkeep and so forth occurred on those facilities. Now, over the course of time, it seems to me that local governments have sort of squeezed people to stop them from having such things. And, and by way of offering some sort of similar thing, they've made public parks and the like available. The, the first thing that you need to understand about public, public parks is that they are open to public um, laws, ordinances, and so forth. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. I'm glad to have you aboard today, whether it's on Rumble, on YouTube, or, or on the podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, the 30th of March of 2021. Uh, and as I say, I am your host, I am Kurt. So, the discussion is pretty simple, really. I heard somebody recently talk about the idea that homeless people were being booted out of a public park. And I thought to myself, you know, if they tried to stay in one of our public parks in the daytime or overnight, they'd end up getting kicked out. And they would have, the, the city would have every valid reason to do that in terms of the ordinances that exist where that's concerned. Why? Because there's an ordinance that says, at sundown, the park's down. It's done. Now, do they always adhere to that? Do they always kick people out at that time in the evening? No, not so much. Certain parks, they're more prone to do that too in this local area. Other parks, they don't care as much if that happens. But the point is this, most people who go to the park anyway will be going in daylight hours. And that means if you have a homeless encampment set up in a city park, you're going to make it impossible for people who would use the park to do so unless the people in the homeless, uh, you know, set up are, are done in such, you know, have done things in such a way that they're not inhibiting the use of the park. Personally, I don't care if a homeless person decides to set up a tent in the way in the back corner of a park somewhere where nobody's ever going to see him. Somebody else may care about that. I don't really care. I'll find somewhere else to be in the park. If they're not setting up on the playground equipment or in the place where people kick balls or throw frisbees or on the pond if there happens to be a pond in the park or in the stream or whatever, I don't care. I don't care. And I don't think most people would care either. But the thing is that the tendency for people who set up homeless encampments and parks is not to set up for one day, to break down at the end of the day, to walk away and to come back tomorrow night. If they did that, I wouldn't have any problems. If they set up a single tent, if somebody set up a single tent or a couple of tents in a couple of locations within the park uh, that nobody really saw anyway, I wouldn't care about that either. The problem is there's a tendency to take over the park when they do this. And it makes it impossible for parents and so forth who are trying to deal with their children to go to the park. I like parks, okay. But I can tell, I'll tell you a little secret, okay. As far as it goes, if I never see the, the inside of another park, I won't really care very much. So long as I can get somewhere where I can see, you know, um, trees and forests and animals and so forth, I don't really necessarily care if that's a park. Don't care, right? Uh, there's land that's technically not private property. It's technically publicly owned. But the reality is that nobody's looking at that land and you can get out on it and do whatever you want to do. So if I really cared just for me, I would drive out to one of those places. I would spend a day at one of those places. That's not what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with is a bunch of parents who are working for a living and whose kids want to go to a public place where they can Get, get out and breathe the air. And that's particularly important in this time when COVID-19 is an excuse to keep inside areas closed so that I can't take my kid to them without having them wear a mask, which I'm not going to do because it's not, I don't consider it to be healthy for the child for multiple reasons. We could get into the details of that. I'm not going to do it. I don't consider it to be a good idea. I don't even like taking my kid to the local store with a mask on. I don't consider that to be a reasonable thing. And I think any parent who, who does, I'm really kind of questioning where they got, get their idea of what parenting ought to look like. All of that having been said and done, the point is public parks are places where people, particularly parents in general, 
can take their children to go and play. Uh, there are very few places that you can do that with where you don't have to go quite a distance if it's not if not for public parks. They, they basically don't exist. If you think that I'm just trying to be some high, snooty, hoity-toity individual, think again. If you look at the total number of homeless people in most communities, you will find that the number is actually quite small. The problem is not the number of people, it is where they choose to find themselves. And when they choose to find themselves in places like public parks, they make it impossible for people who are taking care of children uh, and I'll just tell you something. I know a couple of people who have older uh, um, children or wards, whatever you want to consider them, who go to parks because it's a place where they can play, where those where those uh, older uh, individuals are uh, have various kinds of mental, psychological, emo emotional. Um, uh, I don't. I I hesitate to use a word like retardation because it's not really the word that I want. They're not, they'll never be the average person, right? They, they, have, they aren't as mentally, emotionally, psychologically mature as others. And, those, and, these, and there are people out there who use those parks to get those people out in a fairly safe environment. And the same thing applies to places like, like zoos. And it's why they have the rules and regulations that they do in those places. Those places are meant to be family friendly. When you have somebody peeing in the in the weeds on the side on the edge of the park, that's not publicly family friendly. That's why they why people aren't wanted there. Now you can say, well, what should those people do? Well, there are places that they can go, and and uh, I would love to hear that many of them wanted to actually fix their situation. I hate to say this, but I believe many of them do not. And this is speaking from personal experience. There was a time in my life when I was, for a very short period, homeless. And I found myself amongst people who liked where they were. Some of them didn't, to be fair. Some of them didn't. But most of them did. They wanted to be where they found themselves. There was a literally a, a band from Ecuador, maybe, and... Uh, musical band and they and they would live out quote under the stars because it's what they wanted it's where they wanted to live and how they wanted to do things and i'm not going to tell people you can't do that but i am going to tell them if you do that you should not count on people wanting for you to do that in the middle of the city whether it's in a park or not they're not going to like that if you're a person who's just fallen on hard times or whatever that's understandable if you're a person who can't see their way to living in some facility somewhere until you get yourself on your feet. I get it, I guess, but what you need to understand is you're going to have problems with other people. Getting back to the idea, though, of public parks, my answer to you is if it's public, it's, it's ruled by municipal ordinances or whatever, and you have to live up to those ordinances. And yes, it's okay for the, them to unequally enforce that. If people aren't complaining because somebody's in a park after dark, you know, I don't see any reason for anybody to worry about it. But if people are saying, look, that park is supposed to not have people in it after dark, and there are people in it right now, uh, and they're sleeping there or whatever, and, and, and it makes it so that the individuals in question are... are um, you know, are kicked out of that park. I hate to say that, but this, but that's what the municipal ordinances are there for, is exactly things like that. I want homeless people to be dealt with, to be helped. I do. But I don't want for them to take over areas. And I'll tell you something, I don't mind if they sleep in parks so long as they leave in the morning. I don't care. That's fine. So long as they don't have their encampment set up in the morning. They don't even necessarily have to leave. I just don't want encampments of homeless people and I don't want a horrible messes left by people, regardless whether they're homeless or not, in the public parks. That's all I'm asking for. All right, I'm about out of time. Again, today is uh, Tuesday, the 30th of March of 2021. That means tomorrow will be Wednesday, the 31st of March of 2021. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about government money. That's a really loaded subject right there. Uh, we've talked about public parks today. I think that's mostly what I've managed to talk about. I hope that you've enjoyed what I've said. And I'm definitely willing to hear some comments on how people think about this. 
I know how I feel, but I would like to hear how other people feel as well. All right, I hope you're having a good day today. It started to rain here, but we're still having a reasonably nice day all in all. Uh, still looking for work, so uh, hopefully that'll resolve itself sometime in the very near future. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll live with what we get. Hope that you are doing well, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Tuesday, the 30th of March of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurt's Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with a with an S dot kpshubert.com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert.com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.